Hi, my name is Kenny Kenji Gallo. I'm 42 years old and I'm from Los Angeles, California. Uh, my street name was Kenji Snaps and it got shortened to Kenji because I'm half Japanese. Later on, I became known as Breakshot, which is the code name the FBI gave me when I was wearing a wire. Uh, Breakshot was the code name that the FBI gave me so that they didn't, I didn't have to use my real name. I grew up in Orange County, California in a, t a town called Irvine. Uh, my childhood was good. I mean, I came from a middle class family and, you know, everything was good. I went to private schools. The way I got involved in organized crime was through drug dealing and I met people there and then the place where we mostly hung out at a restaurant, uh, I started to meet mob guys, guys in the LCN, and it just progressed from there. The family that I was affiliated with it wasn't just one family. I was affiliated with for many years with the Los Angeles family, the Milano crime family, and from there I went to New York and I became affiliated with the Colombo family. Like first I, I was dealing drugs and then I was laundering money and then it progressed to pornography and then gambling and um, loan sharking and mostly it was gambling and uh, at, towards the end gambling and the pornography. The life was really good at first. You know, when I was younger it was good and it was fun. It was all girls and, and everything else. But then later on it became just a total drag. You know, um, I saw crazy things like car bombs. I saw, I mean, hundreds of kilos of cocaine. I saw guys shot dead. I went on a, a hit with Teddy Persico, which didn't go down. I saw, went on drive-by shootings. I mean, I've seen it all. I wanted to get out of the life by the time I was about 27 years old. I, the, I burnt out on it and I was over it. Did I regret hurting people? Yeah, I did. I mean, right away I felt it, but I just kind of put it in, in the background because I was so caught up in the whole lifestyle and what I was doing. Uh, what really led up to me cooperating with the government was I was just burned out on the lifestyle. The people were just shitty and it was a crappy life and I knew I was eventually going to go to prison for life or I was going to get murdered. And I figured out no one's my friend in that lifestyle, so I cooperated. I started cooperating for the FBI and to help them I wore a wire for eight years. My phones were wired, my car was wired, my home was wired. Um, that's it. And I testified too. I testified against my cohorts in crimes. Uh, the first thing that happened after people found out I was cooperating was they, uh, some guys in Brooklyn took my car and made it disappear. Other guys started calling me and threatening me. They went to a pay phone. They had other guys call me that I knew and say, you know, what are you doing to your family and friends? And that's it. Basically, the FBI moved me, so I didn't have to deal with that after that. Most 90% of the people that, that uh, I cooperated against, I never had to testify against. Only, only a couple people. Most of the people plead out before. When I first got into the program, uh, life it's really boring because you just sit. I sat in the hotel room for one year all by myself. Adjusting to my new life was really hard because I had to get used to the fact that I couldn't explain to anyone about where I came from or what, what I used to do before. And I, I just didn't have the kind of friends around me that I grew up with. So I could just say, hey, remember that time or this? And I could just, you know, make a gesture and they would know what I'm talking about. Oh, one of the funniest things is they used to come, at first they used to come every week and then give me my money. Like, it's a per diem that I have to sign for. It. And then after, after they got used to me and that didn't cause any trouble, the guy just came over one time and he said, okay, I'm coming back on January 6th. This is a month away. So I signed all the vouchers and he's like, don't get in any trouble. And as soon as he left, I was out the door and I, would, I had to walk like two miles to go buy a plane ticket from the auto club. And then I flew to Miami and I was down there for New Year's. There was not really any sad stories for me because I used it to my advantage. I took the time to like study and read up and plan for my new life and just reflect on myself. The reason that I got, got out of the program, I just, I just got tired of like having to check in and having to live by these stringent rules. So what I did is I just, that's it. I just decided I was gonna leave and I told them ahead of time and they gave me another month and then I just took off. Overall, my experience in the program was good. I took that time to reflect and to write like I wrote my book and I study. Oh, I am very glad that I decided to go into it. It was 100% it was the right choice. The program definitely saved my life. I was, leaving, I was going on a path of destruction at that point. Uh, when I look back on my life now, um, I have a lot of regrets about some of the stuff I did. And I kind of look at it now and I wish, why well, I could have done it easier. I'm moving forward with my life now, but I'm just always trying to do the right thing. I stay positive and I do, I like to write a lot. I like to help people out. I like to speak in public. That's it. I like to get my story out there. I like to let people know that, hey, the mob life is not all glamorous. It's not all jewelry and fast cars and everything else. That it really is just a grind. And every day people get hurt and there's no happy endings to this.
Am I afraid? I'm not afraid of being discovered at all. My name's in the book, huh? Is your name in the book? My name's in the book and I'm on Facebook. <laughs>